Hallelujah. God bless you and thank you to everyone that is tuned in tonight with us on our broadcast. I'm going to ask that you do me a favor and share the broadcast with all of your followers. Let them know we are live tonight and we are here uh, at Foundational Truth to worship God. Tonight is a night of prayer. It's a night of prayer. Um, and we will be going into prayer in just a few moments. Um, but I want to share some things with you that the Lord has given to me. So if you would, again, please like and share. Uh, we bring greetings to you um, on behalf of Lady. She sends her blessings to you all tonight as well. And we say, God bless you. It is good for us to be here in the house of the Lord. And so again, if you are watching live, if you are watching live, I'm going to ask that you share it with all of your followers as we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, prayer is just one of those mantles that the Lord has given to me. And on Sunday, he gave us the mandate that we should have a night of prayer. And that's what we are doing. But before we go into prayer, I want to make sure that I touch on something uh, really briefly I don't plan to be in this area very, very long, um, but the Lord uh, brought something to my attention on Sunday as we uh, came from the subject talking about the difficulty of believing God, the difficulty of believing God. In the scripture, uh, Jesus is healing a man's son who has been um, uh, touched or has a dumb and a deaf spirit. And uh, Jesus says to him, if thou canst only believe, and Jesus tells him, uh, but he responds to Jesus and says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And so he has an unbelieving spirit because of some things that have happened to him in his life. In the context of our message, we uh, begin to discuss uh, various things uh, like uh, demonic spirits and witchcraft and various things like that. And in the context of the message, I made a statement uh, that uh, one, that we are not afraid of witches and we are not. We're not afraid of demonic spirits. Jesus said, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy and you will tread upon serpents and scorpions and demons and nothing by any means shall harm you. And so uh, we wholeheartedly believe that we do not walk in fear. However, another statement was made uh, that we can declare that it has the boomerang effect. And I mean, we took off with it. Uh, but the Lord dropped something uh, on me, on my spirit through Lady, uh, that we discussed even on our way home from church. And so I want to I want to talk to you really, really quickly about it. Again, those of you that are watching online, if you can share the broadcast with everyone. But I want to touch on this very, very quickly because I want to make sure that as uh, your pastor that we are a sound church, that we're not just saying things uh, out of uh, environments that we've grown up in, that we're not just saying things uh, because it makes us feel good in the moment. Uh, we're not just saying things uh, because it, it makes us look big and bad or anything like that. All right. So the first thing that I want uh, someone to do is type it in the comment section. Those of you that are here, you can shout it out. Shout no revenge. No revenge. All right. No revenge. Uh, that is the first thing that I want to give to you. No revenge. No revenge. And here's why I say that. I want to go to James chapter number three. James chapter number three. And this is going to lead into our prayer on tonight. This is actually going to lead to our prayer tonight. Um. I want to start uh, uh, James chapter 3. Let's start at verse 7. You find these words. I'm reading from the Holy Christian Standard Bible. Every sea creature, reptile, bird, or animal is tamed and has been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a relentless, it is, it is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Okay? Let me read that again. But no man, this is verse 8, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, meaning the tongue takes no time to sleep from being evil. 
and is constantly ready to be evil, full of deadly poison. Verse 9, we praise our Lord and Father with it, and we curse men who are made in God's likeness with it. Praising and cursing come out of the same mouth, my brothers. These things should not be this way. Verse 11. Does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? Verse 12. Can a fig tree produce olives, my brothers? Or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt water spring yield fresh water, okay? I also want to go over to Matthew chapter number five. Matthew chapter five. Verse 43, let's start at verse 43. This is what it says, Verante. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Verse 44. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. All right? I know this is a hard pill to swallow, but here's why. I've got, I've got your why to all of this. Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. That's the word of the Lord. So here's what I want to say to you tonight. And this is where our prayer point is going to go. In the height of preaching and in the culture that I grew up in, we've been taught boomerang effect. I'm going to curse them. They're going to die. They ain't got much longer to live. But we've got to change the culture of our tongue. Because your tongue has a culture. Right? That may be very, very hard for you to fathom and understand. But I need somebody to type in the comment section and say it with me. Say, my tongue has a culture. Your tongue has a culture. And in the heat of the moment, in the excitement of a moment, your tongue will show you what your culture is. So therefore, if, the, if your tongue's culture needs to be shifted and changed, that also states that there has to be a shift in culture in your thinking and in your mindset. Right. How is it that the very first words that the scripture records of Jesus when he has been crucified on the cross is, Father, forgive them, right. for they know not what they do. Yes. That was his culture. Jesus did not look for opportunity. Watch this. To condemn or to tear people down because of their wrongdoing, or maybe because of their sins, or because of their mistakes, or because of the color of their hair, or whatever the case may be, or even because of their culture. He always looked for an opportunity to bless them, to pull them in on the Lord's side. So as your pastor, as those that are listening, as well wishers, those of you that heard me preach on Sunday, I want to say this to you. Don't curse them. You cannot use the same tongue that you praise God with to curse one another. Which means you got to stop cursing people with your thoughts. We have got to learn how to bless them. And 
the reason we do it? Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your father. If he's really your God. If you really got his DNA. You got to love them. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. We've got to change the culture of our tongue. Because we've been spewing out blessings and cursings. So now our fountains, our springs where people should come and be refreshed is confused. It's polluted. It's poisoned. Because we've allowed too many uh, 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 split decisions, split ways to come out of our mouth. One minute we're blessing. We're blessing who we like and we're cursing who we don't like. Right. We see about who we like and don't care nothing about who we don't like. We'll spend $200 on somebody for groceries that we love and we like and won't give somebody else $2 because we don't like them. Or because we don't know them. So please forgive me as your leader, as your pastor, for saying to you, boomerang. We can't boomerang. Lord, whatever they were setting up to do to me, don't let it prosper. But pull them out of where they are. Right. Change their heart. Change their mind. Sanctify their actions. Sanctify their spirit. Father, fill them with your spirit before you call them away. Before the rapture comes. I want them to make it to heaven. Oh, we want some people to go to hell. But we've got to make sure that as a people, we change the culture of our tongue so that we can be the, the children of our Father, which is in heaven. Yeah. This is what he has called us to do. So tonight, the Lord is challenging us to tame the tongue. This is one of the prayer points that we're going into tonight, that we would tame our tongue, that God would help us to watch our speech that we will watch our speech, that we don't shout and dance about the prophecy today, but then we curse ourselves on Tuesday because things got tough and hard. That we don't receive the healing on Sunday, and then on Wednesday we throw the healing away because it has not happened as fast as you wanted it to happen. We've got to make sure we're taming our tongue. Somebody shout, say, I'm taming my tongue. And I'm not telling you that it's going to be easy. You're going to want to curse some people sometimes, Ted. You're going to want to curse them. You're going to want them to get out of your face. But sometimes God will allow certain things, certain individuals, certain situations to stay before you till it changes your culture. You want to change the habit of them, but God has actually brought them to show you what's in you. He brought you into the situation that you can see what's in you. You're too much of a hot head. You got too much of an attitude. You don't think that you can be offended. Scripture talks about it, and I'm going to move into prayer. Scripture talks about it. When David repented before God, he said, against thee and thee only, Lord, have I sinned. See, we think people have sinned against us, and we don't even realize they've never sinned against us. They only sinned against God. And if God can forgive them 70 times 7, how, how often should we forgive a person, Lord, 70 times 7? Watch this, in a day. 70 times. So if you're not ready to constantly forgive, you are not ready to be a child of the Father. So we got to make sure that we don't allow blessings and cursings to come out of the same mouth. Because he never ordained it to be that way. Amen. You can't be sweet and salty. You can't be nice and nasty. Hallelujah. Amen. So Father, tonight, as we come to the altar, we ask you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you forgive us of all of our sin and righteousness. We say like David said, created us a clean heart and renew within us the right spirit. Cast us not away from your presence and please don't take your Holy Spirit from us. God, 
We've not done everything right, Father. We, we don't think right all the time. We don't say the right things, oh God. We don't do the right things. But you said in your word, word that if we sin, that we have an advocate with the Father who is just and willing to forgive us if we repent. And so, Father, we come right now in Jesus' name asking you to forgive us. Forgive us for all sin, unrighteousness, degradation, unknown and known sins, Father. Forgive us, oh God, forgive us for the habitual sins. Forgive us for the continual sins. Father, there's somebody that said that they wouldn't go back to some things and they went back to them. But Father, tonight we ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you forgive us and that you wash us again. That you make us whole and holy again in the name of Jesus Purify our hearts and our minds and our thoughts, Father. Purify our actions. Help us, O oh God, that our desire would be to please you in everything that we would say, do, and think. In the name of Jesus, Father, purify us, O oh God, that we would think the right way, Father. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So whatever is in our heart, whatever is in our mind, Father, it will come to fruition in our actions. And so, Father, we ask that you regulate our minds for you said in your word let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus so give us the psychology of Christ give us the mind of Christ give us the thought pattern of Christ Father in the name of Jesus when our thoughts go to the left Father oh God bring us back to the straight and the narrow way Father when our thoughts go astray bring us back to the straight and the narrow way in the name of Jesus. Father, purify our minds, Father. Purify it, oh God. When we have the right to think the way that we think, Father. When we feel the way that we feel. When we're justified in our thinking, Father. Purify our mind, Father. So that our actions would be pure. Oh God, that we would be living billboards to men, women, boys, and girls throughout the earth. Letting them know that there is a Savior. There is a Redeemer. There is a Keeper. There is one who came down through 40 and 2 generations hung on the cross and died for our sins purify our minds God Purify our minds, oh God, in such a way, Father, that the enemy cannot get a hold of us. Purify our minds, oh God, that we get rid of suicidal thoughts, that we get rid of wrong thinking, oh God. Purify our minds, that we don't go against our purpose and our destiny that you have ordained for our lives. Purify our minds, Father, in the name of Jesus. For you said it in your word, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are a good report. Think on these things. And so, Father, tonight it is our sincere prayer that this is where our thoughts would be, that this is where our minds would be. In the name of Jesus, purify us, oh God. Purify us till we forget about our old way of thinking. Purify us, Father, until we forget about, oh God, our own way of doing things. In the name of the Lord Jesus, purify us, Father. Inside, I purify our minds, purify our minds, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, some of our thinking has been passed on from generation to generation. Oh God, but we break it now. We go to the seed, oh God. We go to the seed of our generation that started this type of thinking, that started this way of living, Father. And we decree and declare that we uproot the seed, Father. Now in Jesus' name, we uproot it. We pull it up by the roots to decree and declare that it will not grow anymore. We pull it up by the root, Father, so that our children will not think in the same manner. Oh God, we pull it up by the root so that the curse will stop with us, that it will not go to our grandchildren. We pull it up by the root. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we decree and declare that we think on your word, that we think according to your word, that we think according to your plans and your promises. Give us the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. Give us the mind, oh God, and the thought pattern that you had concerning us before the foundations of the world. For you said in your word that before you formed us in our mother's bed that you knew us and you had a plan and a purpose for us to bring us to an expected end. And so, Father, tonight we focus on the expected end. We don't look at what's going on around us. We don't look at what's before us. We don't look at what's on our tables. God, we don't even look at what's in our bank accounts. 
but we decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that our focus is on the expected end, not the turmoil and the trouble, not the hiccups of God and the speed bumps, but Father, we focus on the expected end, knowing that the race is not given to the swift, neither is the battle given to the strong, but time and chance happens to us all. We decree and declare, Father, that your people will be so focused, oh God, that they run into their time and their chance. We decree and declare, Father, that anything that will try to distract them, oh God, from their expected end, we break it now. We break its power. We paralyze its movement. In the name of Jesus, we expunge its project. We expunge its record. We decree and declare that it is cleaned off. We decree and declare that the enemy, oh God, will become confused amongst his imps about his plan and his purpose towards us. And God, that we will be focused on what you declared over our life, what you declared over our bloodline, what you declared over our children and our families, what you declared over our church. We decree and declare that every prophetic word that has been spoken of God, that we don't be moved by it not happening already, but we stand sure on your word that he who will come shall come and will not tarry. We stand on your word that you're not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should repent. And if you declare it over our lives, you're man enough to make it come to pass. In the name of Jesus, we declare it shall come to pass. We decree and declare and we take our mindset to another place that it shall come to pass. We decree and declare that all that you have spoken, you will do. For your word will not go out and return unto you void. We decree and declare it shall come to pass. The prophecy that was spoken of a decade ago, we decree and declare that it will We decree and declare it will come to pass. We decree and declare for every word, every forgotten word, every forgotten prophecy. We decree and declare that it will come to pass. Give us the tongue of the Lord that we will only declare your word, that we will only declare what you have spoken in the heavens. And we decree right now that as it is in the heavens, so shall it be. It will come to pass. I need somebody to prophetically declare it right there in your home, on your computer, on your phone, whatever type of device you're using, with all capital letters, and shout, it will come to pass. We thank you right now, great God, that it shall come to pass. We decree and declare that the earth is moaning and groaning for the manifestation of the sons of that the earth is moaning and groaning for the manifestation of the will and the word of God. We declare it shall come to pass. Oh God, the salvation of our families, it will come to pass. The anointing on our lives, it will come to pass. The favor and the glory you've spoken over us, we declare it will come to pass.
for allowing the wrong language to come out of our mouths. Father, sometimes it wasn't even against our enemies that we were speaking curses over our over their lives, but Father, it was our own lives. It was our own destiny that we began to speak curses over. And Father, I ask you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that you forgive us, oh God, for being our own enemy. Forgive us, oh God, for allowing the voices in our heads to come to come against our destiny and our purpose. Father, forgive us, oh God, for allowing the thing in our heart to be the thing that controls our mouths. Father, we give our minds back to you. We give our wills back to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we decree and declare right now in Jesus' name, oh God, that as your people, that we will declare what you have declared, that we will say only what you have said, that we will only speak out what we have heard from you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, help us to be your echoes in the earth. Help us to be your echoes in the earth. Not in the thing of our own will or our own volition. Oh God, not our own feelings or thoughts, but help us to be your echoes in the earth. Father, help us to speak those things that be not as though they were. Help us to stand on the properties and decree and declare that it belongs to us. Help us, oh God, to stand in the hospital rooms and to decree and declare healing. Help us to stand strong in our homes, oh God, and declare for there to be peace in the name of Jesus. And God, tonight we stand in this church, we stand in this sanctuary, and we decree and declare that there will be an overflow. We decree and declare that the harvest is coming, oh God, in the second half of the year, as you declare it through your manservant. We decree and declare, oh God, that even before the second half of the year gets here, that we will see, oh God, the fruit of that word to start the bud. God, we don't want a buzz, but we do want a bud. We don't want a buzz about our church. We don't want to be the next it church. We don't want to be the next hot church, but God, we want to be your church. We want to be your people. We want to be your anointing in the earth. We want to be the anointing of you in Orlando, in this region, in this state, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, Father, we pray, let the bud start springing up. Oh, God, let the buds of the fruit of your word start showing up, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, in unusual ways. In unusual ways, Father, let the bud of your word, and let the bud, the, the fruition, the sign that fruit is coming, let us see it, Father, in, in unusual ways. Even through our finances, Father, let us, let us see it small spurts of miracles even through our finances father that there is an overflow that there is much more higher and higher that there is much more than enough in the name of the lord jesus thank you oh god that you are being jehovah jireh our provider and we thank you oh god that without marketing that without oh god even social media that you're going to be more than enough for us oh god we praise you right now in the name of the lord jesus oh god that as we stand in prayer on tonight father that you are going to be our jehovah jireh so we thank you that every need is met every bill is paid oh god every piece of equipment oh god is secured thank you oh god for the land and the building thank you 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 that it is already secure thank you oh god that you're giving us the individuals that can sign on the dotted line oh god that the bank oh god is hiring the right individuals oh god to give us the loan thank you oh god that you're throwing our name in the wind according to the holy ghost to millionaires and billionaires that will fund our vision oh god in the name of the lord jesus that will write checks oh god and it not be a loan check or anything with interest but it will be a seed in the ground thank you oh god that the ground here 
is even fertile. Thank you, oh God, that the ground is fertile ground, that the ground here will produce and yield the much fruit in the name of Jesus. Oh God, hear, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, oh God, that, that we trust and believe you for everything. That we trust and believe you for everything. And Father, don't let us be a people that think that we can do this without you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't let us be a people that think that we can do it on our own accord, or our own volition, and our own uh, influence, Father. Yeah. Help us to understand that we need you. Yeah. Father, help us to always come after you yeah. for every decision, for, for every next move. Father, help us to go after you. Thank you, Father, that we are becoming even more a people in a church of prayer. Yes, yes. Father, you said in your word, oh God, that these kind come out only by fasting and praying. Yes. So Father, we tonight make the declaration that we are a church of prayer and a church of fasting. We decree and declare, Father, that we will not be afraid to bombard heaven, hallelujah. That we will not be afraid to approach the porch and the altar. We decree and declare, Father, that we will not be afraid to bow our knees when you said in the book of Chronicles that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal their land I thank you oh God that we are people of prayer not just when we come to the sanctuary but we will find ourselves in prayer that we will find ourselves in prayer in our homes in our cars father even on our jobs thank you father that we are people of prayer that will pump Bar heaven and that we will get answers quickly. Father, thank you that you're giving us even now a beeline to the throne, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh God, make us your special people in prayer that when we pray, you hear us. For when the righteous cry, you hear them and you save them out of all of their trouble. And Father, tonight, that's what we're asking for. Favor in prayer. Favor in prayer. That when we pray, you answer and you answer right away Father we're asking you for favor oh God in prayer and in intercession that we can bind up the devil that bodies would be healed that minds would be regulated that blinded eyes would become open oh God that deaf and dumb spirits would be cast out in the name of Jesus Father give us favor in prayer that we can push back the witch and the root worker and every workers and every paupers that we can push it back off of us Father, that we can push it back off of this city, Father give us favor in prayer that as we begin to pray that revival will break out in this city, not just at foundation, but for every church of God that would name the name of Christ, for every church that would serve you, that revival would break out in the name of Jesus, we can and declare father now favor in prayer that you hear us because we are a people of prayer God don't let it just be one sided that when we come together we pray but father let it be our habit let it be habitual for us habitual prayer warriors that we fast for God on a consistent and regular basis
even the ones that have not come and even the ones that have not joined yet. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we will display, that we will be children of the Father. That we will display it, Father. Even with those who my flesh does not like. But we pray that your spirit would override our flesh. That your spirit would override our flesh. That even our facial expressions will not show. But we will be the express image of Christ in the earth. That we will love all. Your word declares in the book of Colossians. Love unto all mankind through the Lord Jesus Christ. So Father, help us to show unconditional love to all. Those that have hurt us, those that have wronged us, those that have stabbed us in the back, those that we know various things about them and their life. You didn't come to condemn the world. And if you dwell on the inside of us, help us, Father, that we're not somebody's nightmare. Help us, Father, that we are not making individuals uncomfortable with our presence. Help us, Lord Jesus, to not be someone scared to have. Everything else has a sin, Father. 
not just in that way, but help us to display a level of holiness, oh God, and how we respond and how we act and how we talk to one another. Help us, Lord Jesus, to greet each other with a holy hug and a holy kiss in a holy way, Father. Help us, Lord Jesus.
here in this moment, take a moment and meditate on the transformative power of the Holy Ghost as changing you and transforming you in your speech. I want you to take just a minute or so right here and ask the Lord, change my thought, change my tongue.
March the 19th. Uh, we will be having our new members orientation on March the 19th. And so those of you who have not uh, taken new members orientation, that will be your time that you can go ahead and jump in on those classes. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want you to get uh, prepared. I only need you for about two hours on that day. That will be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's two hours. Good to them that hate us and to pray for them, which 